Good morning, everybody. It is 11 o'clock on a Thursday. That means it is time for my Loso Lifestyle with Mary Shep. Mary, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. Um, I will preface this morning's show with uh, if I make weird noises or um, faces, I am perfectly okay. <laughs> you, but You are perfectly okay. Thanks to... Uh, Thanks to being me and all the things that come with it. And when you have nerve damage in your spine, um, my nerves decided to do something funky with with my rib. Uh, so it happens frequently. It is what it is. Comes with the territory. However, I don't know if you've ever bruised, broken, or fractured, or anything um, to a rib or anything in your rib cage. It is not pleasant. In certain rare movements or Things of that nature tend to make you go, oh, okay, I can't hide that one. So <laughs> if you happen to see that, probably when I laugh, because that's the worst part. Ben said something last night that about crippled me over because it made me gut laugh. And, uh, you know, then he felt like a jerk and he felt really bad. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Well, you can't, it's, it is what it is. It's, it happens. Um, um, tried to be nothing but serious today. Um, yeah, right. So. That's going to happen. Especially since we're talking about gadgets and that's today's show is, is gadgets. Cause, um, so my in-laws got us, they, they tend to not wait for Christmas. They tend to Christmas shop early. And now that we don't live next to each other, they tend to send Christmas presents way early. So we got a Christmas present <laughs> in October. Um, they got us an air fryer. Hey, you got, you got one. I know. So yeah. I've been talking about air fryers forever, and I haven't wanted to pull the trigger because with all these kitchen gadgets, I got 100,000 different kitchen gadgets. Hey, Dad. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Pamela. Um, so I've got gadgets upon gadgets upon gadgets. And in all honesty, half the time I end up giving them away because I don't use them. And then they just take up space. Even my bread maker, I found that I used it as a, a kneading device because I'm too lazy to spend 20 minutes kneading dough. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just wasn't getting use out of it. And it was taking up a huge amount of space. So I didn't want to spend more money on another device that was literally just going to sit in a cupboard somewhere and not be used. Um, it's fantastic. I get it. <laughs> I was wrong. I should have gotten one a long time ago. They are awesome. Um, everything that we've made in it has been fantastic. And we've had it all of like three days. Yeah. Uh, I, so, yeah. And Ben even said, he's like, doesn't Pete have one? Hasn't he talked about it? And I, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I might actually buy a bag of potato, um, tater tots. <laughs> It's probably going to be a bad idea because, you know, I'll I'm eat the whole you, bag. I, I, I was so skeptical when my wife said, oh, it's an air fryer. I'm like, you can't fry with air. What do you, you know, that, that, this is oh, the dumbest thing I've heard of. And yeah, it's one of the, that is probably my, my most favorite kitchen appliance that we have. I love that thing. It's awesome. It, you know what? It's funny because, um, I'm still sharing out my thing here. Um, so it's funny because I, you're right. You Air fryers, it, they're not a new thing. No. They are new to homes. Yeah. They're, they're new residentially. Um, commercially, they're, they've always been very popular. It's, it's almost like a convection oven. And even the microwave oven that we have in our house is so old that it's a microwave slash convection slash toaster oven thing. It's got like four different plates in it. You can, that, that are ceramic, you can set it for different things. The one day I almost lit my house on fire because I wanted a baked potato, my old micro crappy microwave, you set it for a baked potato and it just turns it on for three minutes. Mm. This one all of a sudden, a heating element in the light, the microwave got super bright. Why? Because there's an actual heating element in the top of it, turns it into a convection oven to make my baked potato. Oh. I've always made a baked potato in a microwave. I soak a paper towel, stab the baked potato, yeah. wrap it in the wet paper towel, put it in the microwave for a few minutes, and it steams, you know, whatever. Well, when you do that in a convection style microwave oven, 
that has a heating element, it's going to light the paper towel on fire. Yeah. So it's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, so That's funny. It, that being said, technically we kind of have an old school air fryer thing already in our house. But I mean, no joke. We, we made um, steak and steak fries. So essentially a potato cut in eight wedges, eight pieces, like you would get at a restaurant. And shout out to Dax Spices. Everybody knows I love Dax. Mm-hmm. Um, DaxSpices.com. They have a ranch spice now. So like the ranch packets you can buy to make ranch dip and things like that. Ranch is a coveted thing for low sodium people. Ranch, soy sauce, you know, there's certain things that you just can't really make very well low sodium. Yeah. And Dax nailed it. They 100% nailed it. It's fantastic. And I know people are going to disagree because ranch is also one of those things like pizza where everybody's opinionated. You know, everybody has their, you know, Hidden Valley Ranch, Creamy Ranch, whatever ranch, Buttermilk Ranch. Like everybody has their, their favorite. But every single day since we use the Dax Ranch and I ask my husband, so how do you want to, like, how should we season this ranch? Well, you, you don't want to be like, we had the chicken drumsticks last night in the air fryer. Mm. You don't want to do barbecue or spicy or garlicky or honey, like ranch. And then, of course, I decided to go against it because we had ranch like three nights in a row and made honey mustard. So the one that one lone little drumstick that made it in for you to try today mm. is Dijon mustard and garlic and a little bit of honey. And they were fabulous. But the ranch potato wedges, which is literally, I cut the potato, rinsed them off, soaked them in water for just a little bit to, you know, it releases some of the starch. It actually makes a better French fry or better baked potato yeah, or fried potato. Dried them off, light coat of oil so that the seasoning would stick, coated them in Dax Ranch and put them in the air fryer. Like, holy shit, where they, Ben and I were both like, these are probably some of the best steak fries we've ever had. Not a lick of salt, very, virtually no oil. And it was fan freaking tastic. So since then, and we even even the steaks, I put a little ranch on the steaks. So now the steak we're gonna have to you just fool ranch, you just Literally. ranch and everything. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not even kidding. Every single thing that my husband since we tried the ranch stuff. What do you want? What how do you want me to season this? How should we do it? Ranch? Like I, dude, I'm gonna run out of the ranch. It's a little tiny bottle. I didn't buy the big jug because certain Dax spices I go through a lot. Um the super Greek. And the Dax original red. And the mm-hmm. next one I'm going to order in a big tub, like Sam's Club style tub, is uh, the Red Mountain Rub is absolutely fantastic. Mm. But I buy it in a big jug because I go through it. It's not just the little normal spice bottle. I'm going to have to buy the ranch in the big spice bottle because apparently my husband wants everything in ranch. Well, there <laughs> so, you go. But so far, like, holy crap. You ain't kidding. It, it's... I mean, if you have a big family, you're kind of screwed because it really only makes enough for two. Yeah, it's not a huge like the one we have. Ours is big. Huge. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. Well, let me say that it doesn't seem to take a ton of space, right, on the counter. But I mean, well, you can do a lot in it, though. See, ours. Ben it's and I are big, fatties, man. We. It's a big bucket. I mean. Yeah, yeah we, I guess it's. Yeah. Ours has trays, so you can do. Um, we got a new wave and it can do, um, so it's got like three trays. So like the other day we did the steak fries and the steak, uh, one on each tray. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's also got a basket thing for, like you said, the basket for frying stuff and whatever. Um, and then it's got rotisserie. So depending on how we were going to do rotisserie. That's different than ours. Ours is like a, it's like a big, the the bucket thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's big, but. It's not, yeah, you don't put, yeah, there are no, no trays. You just, it's one big bucket. Ours has like 8 million features. So wow. it, it's, but we were, tonight we were going to do um, rotisserie Cornish hens. Because I love game hens. Mm. And because in the air fryer, you can only fit, you know, like a five pound bird or smaller. So I figured two little Cornish hens would be perfect. Mm-hmm. However, um, tonight, because I got into my chiropractor to fix the rib issue that I'm having. And I'm not going to miss that. <laughs> that's that's a necessity. 
So yeah. dinner might be a fend for yourself kind of thing tonight because I got to go see him. And then at seven, because it's Thursday night, we used to do Julianne's. Turns out my favorite coffee shop, which is Aroma Coffee and Wine in downtown Crystal Lake, got ice cream. They partnered up with Julianne's to get custard from them. So now I can go, because it's getting colder out, I can go to Aroma and get an apple cider frozen custard sunday well there you go i know so this i'm a happy camper tonight well i'll be a super happy camper watch once uh doc ron fixes my back and then even more super happy when i have a sunday at aroma coffee there you go all right so yeah now it's funny because people talking about these air fryers so my friend gwen who always watches she's actually sent me a message yesterday she's going to miss today's show but you can always watch it any other time subscribe to our youtube channels our facebook pages you can see them anywhere um hard-boiled eggs have you ever done hard-boiled eggs in an air fryer uh no so apparently it's super fast it cooks them perfect every time and it makes them amazingly easy to peel so i don't know if you like hard-boiled eggs but that's the next thing i'm going to try is hard-boiled eggs because huh i think that's I think that's amazing because that I, to me is like an easy cheater lunch. To well, do yeah, I mean, I like, I like hard boiled eggs and I actually, I love, I love egg salad. I really do. Uh, uh, that's one of my favorite things throwing on bread, but I don't, I don't think we've ever, I mean, I've not, I don't know if my wife is cause she's the one that usually does most of anything with that. I do a few things with the air fryer, like cook tots, and then I cook some more tots. Oh, that, that's a... <laughs> and that's and then, oh, I did. I will say this because we, you know, we ordered out what was it, chilies, I think. Uh -huh. And I got the chicken tenders. And but they can't everything now comes when you have it delivered, it's all hot. But by the right. time you get anything fried, yeah, no, it's it's not. a mush. Yeah. And, and there's nothing they can do about that. Right. That's just the right. way it is. But took those chicken tenders, threw them in the air fryer crisped them right back up and they tasted like they came right out of the the kitchen at Chili's. it was friggin' phenomenal who would have thought like left that's fantastic tossed that's them in there idea. for about uh, i think it was not quite four minutes and uh that's the other thing that's so hard to get used to yeah. like i get it i understand the science behind it so i get why it's so fast but to do the drumsticks, which because of the bone in them normally take so long to do on the grill or in yeah. the oven or whatever. So to, it was just weird to, you know, 10, 12 minutes each side or whatever, and they're done and they're screaming hot and yeah. they stay that way. Yeah. That's what was fantastic is usually, you know, you get stuff out of the oven and by the time you sit down and have dinner, everything's starting to cool off. It's like, man, you know, but that's how restaurants so often, your potatoes and everything that come out to the table are still hot yeah. because they use like convection oven air fryer type technology. They just do it on a bigger scale. Yeah. Um, same with like KFC and, and stuff like that with fried chicken. Most places use pressure fryers. Yeah. So like a pressure cooker, but it's a fryer and it increases the temperature, reduces the time. And that's why they're, they're so fantastic. But it got me thinking about, all of these gadgets, because like I said, I've had gadget after gadget. If you can think of it, I've probably owned it. Um, with the exception of a few things that I will probably go to kitchen outfitters to get more of. Um, it's a very dangerous place to go if you're someone like me. So if anybody follows me, you'll see that yesterday I made a post about going to kitchen outfitters in downtown Crystal Lake. Local family owned company. They've been around for a long time. And it's it's just a store full of, you know, not only kitchen supplies. So if you need things that you, you know, to me in my mind, serve a purpose like baking stones or my proofing baskets that I just got, which these things are so amazing. If you bake bread, I got proofing baskets. Um, it's just awesome. So they have stuff like that. And then of course they have, you know, the ridiculous things the made for, you know, as seen on TV kind of tchotchke stuff that you probably will only ever use once. Um, but it's an amazing little store. So for me, it was an absolute, you know, lesson in self-control mm -hmm. <laughs> because just the, just the baker's rack with all of the bread stuff. So the proofing baskets, the bread tins, 
um, I bought a bakeware stone loaf crock. Yeah. So you can do roast it. You can do anything you want in it. You can bake anything you want in it. Um, it doesn't have to be bread, but it's, you know, that's what I purposefully bought it for was to bake this loaf, which is actually right here. And if you watch the station, they're going to have this um, on what's in your loaf tomorrow. Yeah. What's in your loaf? I think Fridays. Yep. 715. Um, so I don't want to open it because I don't want it to dry out any more than it already did because my husband and I, but holy crap, is it not the most fantastic loaf of bread? Oh, it smells freaking good. Um, I mean, it was amazing. It turned out absolutely perfect. So I am so happy that I bought that. However, given half the chance, I would have bought all of the other ones. And on top of that, they have the French, um, the cast iron enameled set that I want. Because as I'm walking around the store and this guy comes down, turns out it was the owner, comes walking down the stairs. So out of the corner of my eye, I see there's a staircase. I was like, oh, that must be where their office is. And I look, there's more stuff. <laughs> so then I go upstairs. I'm like, man, this is just not fair. They had all of the cast iron enameled. You can buy every single one that you want, all shapes, sizes, the whole nine yards. And they are not cheap. And they're not cheap for a reason because they will last you like you will be giving these things to your grandchildren and great grandchildren. Like yeah. they, they are made to last. But I was like, Oh my good God, I could literally, I need to take out like a second mortgage for this place. I, I could spend an absolute fortune getting all of this stuff. So I did behave myself. I only grabbed a few of the proofing baskets and a couple other things, but I, I and I have to go back there today because I forgot to get something and, and it's going to be so bad. Well, and of course, uh, donations can be forwarded <laughs> yeah, right? to, uh, you know, <laughs> just go visit MilosoLifestyle.com. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to send, send, send dollars to right? Mary to right? help fund her. My GoFundMe account yeah. so I can shop at Kitchen Outfitters and just yeah. buy everything. It's funny because I, the owner is also named Mary. Mm -hmm. And um, we were chatting and she said, I said, this is so bad. I'm going to, like, my husband's going to kill me. I'm going to spend $7,000. <laughs> she should be sponsoring the show i know she it's funny because i told her i said you should come on my show because she because it's her store and i would be the same way yeah. so she's got pretty much one of everything yeah. at her house sure and i was like oh my good god i i have three pantries i have a pantry like that's built into the cupboard that's part of the cabinetry in my kitchen there's a hall pantry and then there's another pantry off my dining room so i i'm like pantried out and i my with what stuff I have now, I'm already full. And I've purred like my bread maker, I gave away, I've given away so much stuff that as far as kitchen gadgets go, my KitchenAid mixer, which as soon as that dies, I'm getting a Bosch. Mm. But any KitchenAid Bosch mixer, any stand mixer, I mean, they're three to five hundred dollars depending on which model you get. Ooh. They last forever. But as soon as mine goes finally, cause I'm like the gears have been replaced a bunch of times. Oh, I beat wow. the crap really? out of mine. <laughs> How long have so, you had it? Um, it was actually a gift for our wedding. So 2008 is when I got my KitchenAid. Okay. But I'm pretty sure it was a refurbished model that she bought. Um, cause I remember yelling at her cause it was, it was a friend of a friend. And it's kind of one of those things where you're like, you, you really shouldn't, like, I don't even want my sister to spend three or $400 on a KitchenAid mixer for me for my wedding. Like, yeah. and she says, oh, no, 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 I got it through this one website, blah, blah, blah. It was only like 80 bucks. So I'm pretty sure it was refurbished, which was fine because I've had it for a decade. Hey, if and it's, it's refurbished and lasted another 10 years. Yeah, no, it's it's served me really, really well. But I do, um, part of the reason I want a Bosch mixer is you can also make bigger quantities. So you can make little stuff, but instead of making you know, two loaves of bread, I can make like six or seven. So I can make quite a bit more. Um, it can handle those kinds of things and it does really, really well. Oh, ow. Sorry, I looked over and I turned wrong and I can hear Kent coming in. Um, but it was just funny because thinking of all these gadgets that we've gotten rid of uh -huh. over the years, like what about the most ridiculous gadgets? To me, the whole smart kitchen thing is just like... Do you really need to turn your oven on to preheat before you get home? I don't do that much cooking, so no. And plus, my wife uh, works out of the house, so no. Right. 
Uh, but I will say this. I saw a smart refrigerator at Home Depot right. that I immediately started playing with and had so much friggin' fun. It had a great big screen right, right on the front. But I don't understand the purpose of that other there's than it's no, fun. There's, there is no purpose. There's no point. There's no need for it because it's a fridge. We know how it works. It's worked right. the same way ever since they came into being. It was just fun. And then you push a button, you can see what's inside the fridge. Like, Open the door. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> but I was still going, hmm, oh, look at that. Isn't this cool? We can push the button. And then, you know, then of course, yeah, well, maybe the door won't get left open by somebody who's always opening the door. Or so, you know, if you got one of those kind of people. I in guess. The house, I don't know. I I am. I'm one that'll stand in front of the freaking door fridge with the door open for half an hour trying to figure out what's in there. And my wife's like, it didn't change from a half hour before you can close the door. I, I don't so. know. I just, when it comes to those kinds of gadgets, especially with, I mean, my husband and I are on the same plane with the whole smart home thing. I've seen one too many Terminator movies and, <laughs> you know, I robot and where they, you know, the uprising and the, the, so you probably weren't a fan of the transformers with the all spark mm, thing. No, I mean, come yeah. on, man. They like, they're just, I don't know. I've seen one too. And not only that, I work on computers a lot yeah. and I'm no computer genius by any means. There's, but still, if you want to get into something, if it's controlled by a computer, you're getting in. Mm. And not to mention so many of these different devices, especially with the security stuff, if you resell it and if it's not done properly. So if I own something and I have the app attached to this, you know, smart coffee cup, and then I decide I don't want it anymore and I sell it to you and now you have it. Mm. Well, my app can probably see what your smart coffee cup is doing mm. because it wasn't done properly. Like it's, it's so messed up. It's so ridiculous. And I, I mean, there's going to be so many people that will disagree with me, but at the same time, I'm perfectly happy coming home and turning my oven on because by the time I take my shoes off and go to the bathroom, and set everything down and grab whatever I want to cook out of the refrigerator. Now my oven's preheated. Yeah. So why did I need to turn it on here before I get home? I just don't get, I mean, some gadgets to me, you know, like the, the, the smart appliances is just, it's just a little too much. I, I, you know, I mean, I was, I was enamored with the smart fridge. I just was, I was playing with it way too much. <laughs> Whilst we were buying, I can totally see that too. We had to get a new washing machine. I don't even know how that works. That's I always joke with Ben that if uh, if I ever see an olive green washing machine sitting on the side of the road that says free, uh, I'm gonna buy it because all it is is a motor and a belt and a tub, and I can mm -hmm. fix that. I don't use any of the features on my washing machine, and now they break every five years. Yeah, they are not meant to last. Same with all the other stuff. No. So even our appliances. We could buy new appliances. They're all 20 years old and they're probably not energy efficient. Maybe they were 20 years ago, but I'm like, they're probably going to last on their 20 years. I don't want, because anything we buy now lasts four or five years and you got to get another one. Yeah. And then, well, the, the washing machine we had that we were replacing was, I think it was eight years old and the dang thing started to smoke. <laughs> probably mean, a, probably a motherboard of some kind, some electrical thing that, yeah. So, tried and decided not and, to do what it's but it, do. and it was i mean it was a big fancy one with many knobs and buttons and bells and whistles. yeah ben yells but, at me because i'll put stuff in the washing machine and i just hit start and he's like well those are sheets there's a setting for that i don't care if there's a setting for that just put the soap yeah, in and turn it on i don't even know how to use ours yeah, there's no. too many there's like 800 things you have to do to wash a, uh, to it's wash so a, a load of whites that used to just be throw the whites in throw some bleach in throw some soap in Put it on cold and you're done. Yeah, I know. So or I was, is that, it's cold for colors or that? Oh I can't hell, remember. I don't know. You are asking the I cook. This I don't is do, a, yeah. This is know. a this is a food <laughs> show. I don't know why we're I talking about I, laundry. I watch yeah, I I, yeah. I just I don't know. I don't. I could care less. Put soap in it. Put some water in it, and it's clean because the the temperature of the water, other than helping to get out stains, I don't think has anything to do with it. Because even washing dishes and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily need the heat will help get baked on stuff off. Mm -hmm. But the soap and that that emulsified action is what actually gets the bacterial microbes and stuff like that off. The same with washing your hands. Um, so in doing, you know, just looking to see different gadgets that I don't have. 
some of these ridiculous things. Now, one I thought was ridiculous, but now I want it because I, I use, you know, sticks of unsalted butter. So like when I have toast in the morning with the bread that I just made, it's cold. And this butter knife thing has little holes in it. So it scrapes the butter off in little tiny curls so that it melts really quickly on the warm toast. Is that this thing? Right yeah. Here? Huh. So it's got, I mean, it looks like a butter knife, but it's got little grater holes on one side of the butter knife so that when you scrape it across the top of that butter stick. So now you can use it actual makes, real butter right. and it's spreadable. Right. Because normally it's rock hard and it's yeah. impossible. So that's what it's meant for. I'm like, okay, at first I thought this was really ridiculous, but now I kind of want it. <laughs> that's slick. Right? On the flip side, the pop socket coffee sleeve, I think is just ridiculous. So if you what? picture a pop, so pop socket for the back of your phone, instead of just being the socket that you stick to your phone, it's stuck to, is sewn into a koozie. And that koozie fits around your Starbucks cup. So now you've got a pop. So if you're too lazy to hold your cup, you have the pop socket to fit through your fingers just in case you can't hold on to that cup good enough. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, it's good for people with small hands. Wow. Well. It's no, also thirteen dollars of wasted money. That's 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 so here. We're gonna share this we're gonna with share the studio with our, audience. Our studio audience. There you go, right there, our studio audience. But um so, I, I I I I would not have I'm a heavy coffee drinker, you guys know that. Um I would not spend thirteen dollars on that. Did you know that over pretty much everywhere except for the United States, like if you ask somebody in another country, they completely and totally do not understand the concept of walking around and shopping with a coffee. What? They just don't get that. Like how you'll see people at Walmart walking around or Jewel walking around with a Starbucks. I always walk around with some, with a coffee when we grow out. Overseas, they I'm don't like, get that. No. They, they like, it's more, I mean, I'm sure it's probably changing with time as Starbucks spreads around the world and takes over the planet. Mm, I don't, I don't actually ever. But overseas, Starbucks. they're more of a, like if you go to Europe or somewhere, Italy, they'll, it's like the espresso, you know, you have the quick sip, the quick shot, the quick, whatever. And then you go about your day. You don't walk around with a 20 ounce venti from Starbucks and mm. consume it all day long. No. Oh. Yeah. So they're, it's just they're just they're, doing the little bitty. Right. Es espresso shots, yeah. the way espresso shots were supposed, we're to, be supposed to be instead of a full, you yeah. know, four of them and mixed with more coffee in a 20 ounce thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why, you know, people are walking around so friggin' high strung these days anyways. So. Right. The other one was, so I found a, it was $53 and it's an electric breakfast sandwich maker. So it's about the size of an English muffin breakfast sandwich. Okay. And it's got two little compartments. So you can put, you crack an egg in one, you put your muffin in one and you close it almost like a waffle iron uh -huh. and turn it on and it cooks everything. And then you pop it open, take everything apart and you make a breakfast sandwich. Huh? Like, I, I don't know for me to put an English muffin in a toaster and fry up an egg versus breaking out a device that I need to make one item. It doesn't make anything else. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just sounds like the most ridiculous thing to purchase. And it sounds god awful to clean. Is it smart? <laughs> There's a, the new generation probably is going to be. I mean, here's the thing I've, I've gotten in, I've been on this waffle you know, kick for a mm -hmm. long time. Cause as it turns out, you can go to Sam's and you can buy a box of 60 Eggo waffles yep. for like $5 yep. and you have waffles for a hundred years. Um, well, or a week in my house, but anyway, you, you slap a couple of waffles in the toaster and anything goes in between those for me, uh -huh. peanut butter, jelly, fried chicken, ham, fried chicken, uh, cheese, ham and cheese on a waffle. <laughs> Peanut, oh, well, you don't like bananas. So I was going to say peanut butter and bananas. Yeah, no, I don't. I could do you that. Know, but I've done peanut butter and jelly sandwiches inside yeah. Eggo waffles. Yeah. Because then it's like a fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. And so free... I guess I kind of have had a fried peanut butter and jelly no, sandwich. I've been doing that lately. And then I actually still pour syrup on the top, too. So I would, too. I would totally And I did that. that. It's it freaking awesome. So, Kent, if you want, there's... Um, so I brought in yeah. soup and bread that I made because um, in my effort to eventually write a cookbook... Uh, I need more vegetarian recipes. So I have two friends of mine that are vegetarians. 
I already make one soup that apparently is a huge hit called Carrie's vegetarian tomato bisque. So I made a batch of that. Um, so there's some of that in the fridge. And then she wanted her request was potato soup and French onion soup. Mm. Potato soup very often has bacon in it. So it's not that you can't make it vegetarian, but as a vegetarian going out to the restaurant, she most commonly can't order it because to add more flavor, they put bacon in it. Hmm. Um, French onion soup is typically made with beef stock. And if it's not made with beef stock, it's made with mushroom stock, but it's also got beef flavoring or Worcestershire or something else in it. So it is still not vegetarian. Um, the potato soup I'm making, well, I was going to make today, but the pet, yeah, might not have the time to do that. So, but the, so the onion soup we made and it was, it was absolutely fantastic. I personally can't remember ever having French onion soup. My husband has, but it's been probably 20 years. So I suspect that for someone and Pete and I were talking about this before the show for somebody who's had French onion soup from a restaurant it's going to be one of those things, kind of like a veggie burger, where you can have a really, really, really good veggie burger, but it's not a burger. Yeah. So I don't care what you tell me, it is not a beef patty. No. Nah. It it might be damn good and really tasty and something I would order again, but it's not a veggie burger. So I suspect that that's the same thing that will happen with this onion soup. It's flavorful. It's really good. It doesn't taste low sodium but it's also not necessarily going to taste like the French onion soup, you know, because it has no animal in it whatsoever. No in there. Um, my husband, however, said it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think that the word he likes to use is orgasmic. Um, he might've said a few other things, but I can't say those on the radio. So there's that. Well, you can, cause we're not FCC regulated. <laughs> but, but I like uh, to be polite to yeah. most of my, my listeners. You're, you're a polite host. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I did bring that in so that you guys can try it. And then, of course, the bread that I brought, um, whether you want to eat some of it today and wow. save some of it for the loaf tomorrow, so it is hands down the best bread I have made to date. Um, and I used my new gadget that I bought at Kitchen Outfitters, which is the the stoneware baking crock that's shaped like a big French loaf, um, which is part of the reason it tastes the way it does. But the other one is because for the first time, so I have a batch of starter in my cupboard now, which is just a controlled or as controlled as I hope it's supposed to be fermentation process of literally just flour and water. Mm. And it steals yeast literally out of the air. So it just takes the bacteria from the environment, creates yeast, hmm. and it makes your, your starter to make sourdough. Um, there's also something called a uh, poolish or sponge, kind of a similar process makes it much more flavorful and a much more yeasty dough, which when you're like me and can't use salt, you need something like that. So instead of just flour and water, you take flour, water and actual yeast like you would with a, a dough, um, mix it together and let it sit for an hour. So it turns into a big hot bubbly mess because you, you wake up all of those yeast. So it's literally a living thing that you then mix in with all your ingredients for bread, which is pretty much just more flour and water and bake it. Hmm. And that's, so that's, what's amazing to me is something so simple is flour, water, and yeast in what normally would be salt, but obviously I don't use salt um, is what makes this taste so fabulous. And the crack in which you cook it, the, the method in which you cook stuff is also what lends because the Maillard reaction that I always talk about, mm -hmm. that's what this is. That brown coating, brown, that yeah. brown chewy dough bread out crusty spot on the outside, that's that Maillard reaction. That's what changes the chemical structure, the the amino proteins on all that that makes it absolutely beautiful. So that was my thing yesterday. So I actually, I'm glad that that was the only task I had yesterday and I set myself to it because otherwise I would have bought about 8 million more gadgets at that Kitchen Outfitter store. Um I, I really probably would have spent an, an entire fortune. I'm, I'm telling you, she needs to uh, become a sponsor of the I know, show right? here. So I know, right? that's what she needs. And you should actually have her, you should invite her on as a guest and then we'll get her up while she's here. I will. I will. Yeah, um, so and I thought about swinging by there this morning if I had more time um, to see if she wanted me to bring anything just to sponsor, like mm -hmm. just a show. Because, I mean, you really have to go there. 
to see the amount of different types of gadgets and things that you could use. It's, and like I said, some of them are awesome and some of them are just so ridiculous. You're like, how is this, you know, and I'm sure the same, my store actually carries these pop socket sleeves for hmm. coffee cups. And I think it's so stupid. I think it's the most ridiculous thing ever. But, you know, who am I to... Um, Somebody's buying them somewhere. Otherwise, they wouldn't be right. available. Well, that's... Um, they wouldn't be on shelves. Like the earbud things. or the for, for Apple phones, you can have the little earbuds or whatever. They're called yeah. earbuds, I think. Yeah, the wireless ones. So they come in a case. Yeah. They have their own little case. And we sell cases for those cases. You sell a case for the case. So, so many people that aren't Apple people come through my checkout and they see this little bin of things and it's like a, a little avocado or a little thing of French fries and it's in two pieces and there's a little piece of plastic loop holding the two pieces together and they're like, well, it doesn't click together. So what, what the heck is this for? Like it doesn't snap together like a case because it's just two rubber form molds that you put on top of your case to make it look like a French fry or an avocado. Again, a useless piece of whatever that people will buy up in droves. Yeah. Cause Hey, now my thing looks like an avocado. I know commercialism at, at its best, right? Well, cause who doesn't want their stuff to look like an avocado? Right. Yes. So no, I was going through my cabinets to see what kind of gadgets that I have that are my favorite. And you guys had pampered chef here the other day. And this one is actually one of my favorite things. Um, I don't have very many Pampered Chef. Actually, I think the only thing I ever had was the spiralizer, and I gave that away too. Um, is this thing, because it's a measuring cup. So if you ever measure out mayonnaise, and you can just, you can't get all of it out of the measuring cup. So this, it just is a little plunger that pops it out. So this one, I actually like. I haven't needed it, because being low sodium, I can't use things like... <laughs> I can't use mayonnaise and stuff like that. So I don't have to do that. But the other one is my peanut butter stir. And see, I did, I was, I was what you but see, now you spoiled it because I was wondering if anybody would get what that actually was. Right. Well, it's kind of hard to see on the camera and we are on radio, but this is true. (laughs) If you buy regular, if you buy fresh peanut butter, like actual ground peanuts, nothing else, which is what I buy because then it's no salt. It's just peanuts. Um, and it's fantastic, by the way. If you haven't tried it, you should try it. And then you'll start realizing how salty peanut butter actually tastes. But it separates, and it's a pain in the ass, because it takes an act of God to, to stir it up. It's just ridiculous. So someone turned me on to this little guy, got it on Amazon. You take the lid off your peanut butter, you put this lid on it, the little stir stick sticks in it, and it churns up your peanut butter, and it's absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. So uh, this is actually one of my favorite things. Um, The only other thing that I use is my microplaner every day because I use so much stinking garlic that instead of chopping or doing whatever, I microplane my garlic, my ginger, my lemon peel, all of that stuff. So I think it was like $2 at Ace Hardware Hmm. and I picked it up on a whim because surprisingly you can find crap like that at Ace Hardware. Yeah. So as far as kitchen gadgets, I've had all of these things and I just don't use them. Like, do you, have you ever had a like ridiculous thing in your kitchen where you're like, what is the purpose of this? Or you bought it and never used it? Um, I mean, I know you're not necessarily a chef person, but I know your wife cooks quite a bit. She cooks quite a lot. Um, For me, probably, what, what, what what have I had that I just never, ever use? Oh, oh, well, that's not a... I had a Twinkie maker. <laughs> Excuse me. I had a... Because I love Twinkies. But then for a while... That's just hilarious. Um, you know, I couldn't do the bleached the bleached mm-hmm. flour, and that was some time ago. So my wife found this... act is an actual Twinkie maker. And, uh, you know, it was branded by Hostess, everything. And it... it I mean, it was all right, but... It just wasn't Sounds a Twinkie. Sounds like more work than it's worth. Um, yeah, because it, 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 it didn't clean easily. So that's funny that you say that because that's. It, it just didn't taste. I mean, it made no. a little spongy cake that you could squirt some stuff in. Sounds like an easy bake oven gone wrong. It, it kind of is. It kind of was. Exactly. We don't have it anymore. It did did actually, it have a light bulb in it? it no, no. 45 it, watt? 
it 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 looked like it looked like a very funky uh old waffle iron kind of because it had a imagine. top half and a bottom and you put your your dough your your whatever your cake batter. batter in there and you closed it and it would you know bake you a nice little and it made like a dozen of these things and and you obviously you can make a dozen twinkies See? and then you, you pull them out and then you fill them with your frosting frosting or cream. your cream or whatever it just wasn't the same and it was more of a pain in the ass to use and to just go buy a box of Twinkies. Right. So, well, that's what my husband and I determined. That, that was probably my most useless kitchen spend ever. Was, uh, right. The cleanability is what determines whether or not we will use it. So when I was making this French onion soup yesterday, and it's funny because I always have this debate. I, I mean, I know that my, palate is unsalted but everybody that i give my food to seems to genuinely enjoy it i'm like how come i crack open even now with an unsalted palate if i crack open a heart healthy or unsalted soup it tastes like garbage it's gross it's absolutely disgusting to me it has no flavor it's very bland and it's like how is it that i can make flavorful soup that's low sodium but commercial stuff still like are the taste testers like salties and they just say, well, no matter what, it's going to taste like ass. So who cares what it tastes like? Like screw the low sodium people. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Like I, when I first started, I was like, maybe one does it my taste palate... like ass? It passes. Right. God. I mean, I want to know who knows what that tastes right. like. Well, I don't, don't how put that they, question out there because you'll get some responses. How are they knowledgeably making the comparison? You'll get some responses. I mean, I mean, I don't want to know that actually. I, that's just a curious um, thought. So, But so that's, I just, and Ben and I were talking about that last night because I go, I don't understand. So he's telling me how amazing this soup tastes. And I'm like, I don't get how it is because I didn't add any salt. I didn't do anything crazy. There was no, you know, kitchen gadget that I used to bring some kind of impossible flavor to this mm -hmm. it was ingredients in a stock pot and yes there is some technique to the order in which you do things um and my sister learned this a long long time ago she asked me to fix a crock pot of chili mm -hmm. and i said i can't there, there's no amount of ketchup i can pour in this that's going to make it better if you <laughs> she literally just put all of the ingredients in the crock pot and turned it on um, so the meat itself had no flavor because the flavor was in the chili. Did she cook the meat before she put it in? No, there? it was just all in the crock, which you can do, but that's so she why put raw, raw meat. Right. And you can do that. You can, I mean, you can, but it's not right. You yeah, lose that Maillard right. reaction. Yeah, you can't season not... the meat. So, I mean, there's certain things that you just can't, you know, that there's certain processes that need to happen. Yeah. Um, so yes, there was an order in which I did things, uh, in, I have a knowledge of flavor profiles. So I know what kind of things to do with what to bring out. Even my husband's like, you're going to do a white and a red wine. Well, the white wine serves this purpose to bring this kind of flavor profile. Since I can't use salt with the onions and the garlic and all that in the beginning. Mm. And the red wine is because normally with French onion soup, you would use port wine. Mm. And yeah. I'm not going to go out and buy port wine because I cook with Cabernet. So I always have Cabernet in my house, so it just happens to be Cabernet. Yeah. So there is a technique to it, but at the same time, it's really not that complicated. And it's still only one big giant stock pot that everything goes into. And it didn't ultimately take that long, other than the time it takes to to cook down the onions. But I, I'm I can't wait till you guys try it because it's in my opinion, it's it's really, really good and it does not taste low sodium. So it's just it's always so shocking to me that you know the, the commercially made stuff just tastes so absolutely horrible because i thought for sure once my palate changed it would taste better mm. so i bought some low sodium wedding soup still tasted like garbage like i don't i don't mm. get why they can't you know why they can't make it better well i mean they're, they're probably just worried about making it on the scale to make it saleable right because it know? has to be per guidelines it has to be under a certain thing for serving which we've talked about this yeah. before that servings are a joke and um and they're gonna have to bank manufacture so much of it to even turn a profit on it so the thing that sucks is how deceptive it is because a can yeah. of soup 
a normal can of soup that you see, not the can condensed size, like the one that looks like the size of two coffee cups mm. is two servings. So yeah. when it says under 420 milligrams of sodium, that's if you eat half the freaking can. And I don't know about you, but I have never in my life eaten half a can of soup. No. Nah. Oh, I'm so, I'm so full. <laughs> half a you can. Are so yeah. do. You do. You eat half a can. Uh, no. No way. See, that I would believe. Like, if you're actually watching your portion sizes, and I still have to do that. I do have to watch and, and play with portion control. But I also plan, and I, I pay attention to those things so I can eat the entire can of soup versus having because i know that i'll be hungry and it's funny because a lot of people who are low sodium the biggest complaint that they have is still eating enough calories in a day hmm. because by being low sodium you eat less fast food yeah so you, you do eat a whole lot less and when you are watching portion control and you say okay i can eat half a can of soup because that's how much sodium i can have but then you're like, okay, I've had 300 calories. I can't eat bread because it's high sodium. I can't eat this, that, or the other. I can't have potato chips. So your caloric intake just takes a nosedive, which then your protein, your potassium, magnesium, and all this other stuff takes a dive with it as well. So it's, it is a fine line to balance your sodium and your portion control and keep your caloric intake to where it needs to be. Because... Yeah. So oh, yeah. Right. And that's where, so muscular atrophy happens really fast. It's why it's a concern in hospitals when people get hospitalized for long periods of time, because your muscles die faster than they grow. So for somebody like me, you know, I only spent a few days in the hospital when my liver failed, but I already had signs of muscular atrophy mm. because I was so malnourished for so long that had started long before I went in the hospital. So they said, you need to eat more protein. I said, well, the dietitian lady said, I got to watch my protein because it's harder for my liver to process. This is all well, that too. Okay. So which is it? No. Well, I mean, you got to watch your salt. You didn't answer my question about the protein. So I had to do research, come to find out I need more carbs and more good fats because it helps my body process the more difficult to digest proteins, which means I had to up my caloric intake but still keep my sodium levels down and my potassium levels up. Oy. So it's, it is definitely a balancing act. So when people are like, oh, you, but you look like you're doing really good. It took a lot of effort on my part to not be on medication. <laughs> you have to do math to live. You, you really do. You really, really do. Um, and no gadgets helped me figure that out. It was a, just a shit ton of flipping research. Oh, man. But so do you have a, an instant pot too or no? I do don't know if we do or not. I think my daughter does. I don't know if we... Because well, next to air fryers, those are the two most popular things. Right I'm going to I'm gonna say go. no, since I don't know if we do or not. Because I imagine if we did, my wife would probably use it fairly frequently. So I know my daughter does. Yeah. But uh, I don't think we do. Because that's the other one as far as if you're going to look up gadgets. The, the instant pot, which is like a crock pot turned pressure cooker. Yeah. Um. And then the air fryer are the two like top things that you'll find. Um, me, my, my recent, I guess that you would call gadget that, you know, you could literally just rinse your vegetables or your lettuce or your whatever mm -hmm. is a salad spinner. I refused to buy one for years just because it sounded like the most ridiculous thing. And I finally caved and bought one the other day. So when you wash your lettuce, because everybody knows lettuce keeps getting recalled. Yeah. Um, it's because the bacteria and stuff that grow on it literally causes brain damage and it's really, 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 really bad. Wow. Which is why they recall it. So you're supposed to wash all of your vegetables and your lettuces and stuff like that. But if you've ever washed your lettuce before making a salad, then you have a droopy wet salad, which just, is yeah, gross. it's just gross. Yeah. So the salad spinner, you literally put it in a bowl, put the lid on it. Oh, and it's okay. got a little and piston you, thing. Yeah, and it's oh, okay. My, super my, yeah, my wife like has a, one of those things. Okay. Um, so I got one of those the other day and I absolutely love it. I'm such a dork. I, I mean, it's it's funny that the kitchen gadgets that I'll keep and the ones that I'll throw in like a bread maker, you'd think that I would use that all the time. But once I discovered certain recipes that my KitchenAid or my stand mixer will need for me, mm. 
because that's the only part that I don't want to do. I'm just too lazy to, because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of muscle. And if you haven't ever done it, it sucks. So unless you're passionate and own a bakery and love making bread and want forearms like Popeye, it just sucks. It's yeah, just no fun. The, the only bread making ever that has an act. Well, let me take that back before I finish that sentence. There are, I think they're, they're more like cake kind of things. They don't, you don't have to knead the dough. Like mm -hmm. if you're making like applesauce bread or right. whatever, zucchini really, bread and all that zucchini, stuff, that you mix stuff. the batter, throw it in a loaf pan and yeah. it sucks. So, but now the, uh, the actual bread that gets made is the stuff that gets thrown in the bread maker. Mm -hmm. And then, then you push a button and you go away. Well, that's, what's so funny about, and I, I in and all I, my research, I actually really like the bread maker too. I do like the outcome, like mm -hmm. what comes out of it. I do like, but because I like an actual traditional style loaf to make sandwiches and crostinis and things well, yeah, like that. Cause the bread maker loaf is like, weird. and you can buy ones that are loaf size mm. versus the big tall thing. Um, but once I found the recipes that I could just throw in my kitchen aid and not care, it's the same as a bread maker where it used to be all of the recipes I had, it was just, there was a process to it and it was, this goes in at this time and you got to do this and that and the other and other than making the sponge the other day, which I can still do right in my KitchenAid mixer, I just have to make the sponge and let it sit for an hour and then dump the rest of the stuff in it. So um, Pamela says that a couple of years ago, her husband kept mentioning that they needed an Instapot and then he bought one for her for Christmas and she's never used it, but he does. <laughs> so so he needed an right, instapot right, is what right. the story of that is so well go. that's what's funny is i was joking last night that ben has actually made me dinner twice this week because he's the one using the air fryer because when we <laughs> got it when it because his parent you know they live in wisconsin so they shipped it so i was at work when it came and see he actually was the one that unboxed it and read the instructions so by the time it came to make something in it i haven't had a chance to even see how it plugs in. And he already had read the whole manual, read the guide, got all the things down and knew how to work it. So we just, I just ran to the store and picked up what we needed. And like when we made the drumsticks, just seasoned it up and he's the one that, that did it. So I'm yeah. like, sweet, Ben can make me dinner now. <laughs> I'm well, going to go yeah. sit on the couch. <laughs> see, and that's uh, my wife. I mean, when she got, I'm like, this is a, that, uh, I seriously, I was so down on that purchase. And now I think it's one of the best things I've ever seen come into a kitchen. I love that thing. I, I throw egg rolls in there, right. wontons, any, anything that you want crispy. Uh, and I like to eat crispy things. I like fried food. I just do. Obviously, that's my shape. I'm the shape <laughs> of a man who likes fried food. But that's yeah, I, love, I love that thing. That air fryer is just uh, amaze balls. I love it. Amaze balls. I haven't heard that in a while. Um, so it that Bennett actually said, he goes, if all we ever use this for is steak fries and drumsticks or chicken wings, I, I'm sold. Hmm. Like something that's 15, 20 minutes on the counter done. Like the other night we were done with dinner and he's like, why is it so early? I said, because it is early because we didn't spend six hours cooking. No, it was, and even the fries, the way they came out, they didn't look fried. So they were kind of crispy around the edges and whatever, but they were fried. Mm -hmm. They were, they, it was nice, crispy crunch, whole nine yards. We were, we were sold at the ranch steak fries. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, I have to order more ranch from Dax tonight because I'm pretty sure that between the steak fries and all of everything else that we've cooked that has been ranch the last few days, um, we are now out of Dax Ranch, which is sad. No. That'll make my husband cry. And but again, Dax, if you'd love to sponsor yeah, the right? show, why reach out to Mary Shep at MyLosoLifestyle.com. It's See, I'm so actually, simple to do. I, I've meshed, it, they sent me, the last time I ordered something, um, she sent me an extra seasoning that was new. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. Um, because she saw my order come through and she knows who I am. I was like, oh, that was really sweet. You didn't need to send that. And she said, you know, thanks for mentioning her on the radio and stuff like that. And it's funny because I actually, last night when thinking about it and thinking about having Mary from Kitchen Outfitters on the show, talking about all the different kitchen gadgets and stuff, um, 
And she said, you know, once you, if you ever get your cookbook done, bring it here and I'll sell it at the store. And I was like, you know what? I need to introduce her with Dax um, and see if she can start selling Dax in her store. Yeah. Because that would be fantastic. Not that I don't want to buy a Dax online on Amazon or whatever, but to get the exposure and have it sold locally would be fantastic to be able to, to share with all my Loso people here in McHenry County um, to actually have it here. So I'm, that's my next thing, but I'm pretty sure that they're not at the store today. So I have to wait until the next time I go there. Gives me an excuse to go back. Oh yeah. Cause you know, like I need an excuse to go to a kitchen supply store for anything at all, at all. No, you don't. You're just going to go. I, I am going to go because I, I need, it's funny trying. I have a lot of recipes for my book, but I have a lot of the same recipes so I can make a noodle dish about a thousand different ways. Spicy noodles, taco noodles, you know, a, a creamy mm. noodley something dish with some sort of meat, chicken or pork in it with whatever I have in my cabinet. But I, I'm not making a noodle cookbook. <laughs> it's, it's a low sodium cookbook. So I want low sodium vegetarian things. And so I've been reaching out to all of my friends, like, what would you want? And that's why I made the involtini the other day. That was good. Cause one of the girls at work was like, I love, 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 love this dish. Could you make it low sodium? Of course she starts explaining to me how her family had made it and they use porcini, which is Italian bacon and also fabulous. And also something that I, I mean, one slice of it is like three days worth of sodium for me. Wow. So I, I can't even usually get away with having, like with bacon, you can buy low sodium bacon and I can have like two pieces. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Italian bacon is a little bit more difficult. It's not quite the same to yeah. be able to, it's not the same. I don't know that I've ever had Italian bacon and I've had a lot of freaking bacon. I'm not a fan of the Canadian bacon. That's no, not well, bacon. That's, that's freaking ham. And so it's it's super thinly sliced. You usually find it within the specialty lunch meats. So you can get it at any deli counter. Hmm. And they usually slice it really thin because of the fact that it is very, very strong. Um, and it's very, very, very salty. Hmm. But it is also very, very... And what's very it much. called? Porcini? No, Por that's porcini mushrooms. Uh, prosciutto. Sorry, prosciutto. 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 Oh, yes. I, I think I've seen prosciutto. Yeah. And you'll okay. get it on sandwiches, like Italian subs and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll get prosciutto, depending oh. on how fancy the restaurant is. All right. I'll have to check that out. I don't think I've ever actually had it. Yeah. I know what I've seen it. I don't I don't think I've ever had it. There's um, I didn't know it was bacon, actually. It's called Italian bacon. It's pork and it's cured. It's Italian, so they call it Italian bacon. Oh. But it's um it's not necessarily because bacon is usually pork belly. Yeah. Which we were talking about that too the other day with being able to like the French onion soup, being able to make something really good mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean it's the same. And it's the same with bacon. I can make a really good slow roasted pork belly mm -hmm. that tastes fabulous, mm -hmm. but it is not a salt cured smoked. Mm -hmm. I can make a smoked pork belly mm -hmm. and it is really good. It is just not bacon. No. So no. that's what I always think is funny is. Um, when people call something that it's not <clears throat> so like the veggie burger one minute here why don't you tell everybody how they can reach you connect with you and learn more about living low sodium lifestyle uh, that was really weirdly worded my apologies <laughs> my low sodium lifestyle living low sodium um my facebook page my website my low lifestyle.com and subscribe to the youtube channels 21 6 the net and my local lifestyle we both have youtube channels i've said it before i'm subscribed to both and i'll say it again please subscribe because the more subscribers we have the more stuff we can do with our channels and the more things it opens up for us to be able to share with the world what we do and where we are and what shows we have and things we have to share so it's fabulous fabulous thing um actually tonight i will be updating some of the recipes on my website including my bread recipe mm -hmm. so if you want go to my local lifestyle later on this evening or tomorrow and you'll find my bread recipe there so it'll be good Awesome. We'll be back next week, Thursday at 11 a.m. with Milo So Lifestyle. Mary Shep, we'll catch you mm -hmm. all then. So long, folks.